second. Is this where the damn drumming and the music kicks in? Yeah. <laughs> What in the world is going on, everybody? Hello and welcome to On The Pipe Podcast once again. I'm your host, as always, Tyler Shepardson, and today is Tuesday, August the 1st, 2023, years after zero, and we are back in your life out here at On The Pipe Podcast. This is an episode of OTP Tuesday, and you have joined me just in the nick of time to probably be very frustrated at tonight's episode. So we gotta leave it we gotta leave it two ways. There's there's a lot of room to be frustrated and there's a lot of room to be excited. All right. So we got a lot of stuff going on. We did take a little bit of a brief hiatus. Appreciate you guys bearing with us. Uh it was summer break. You know what I mean? I what I felt bad about. This is what I felt bad about. We had Craig Oberholzer, friend of the show, in here, and old Goober Gazer and I sat down. We had a heck of a conversation. It really was a really good show, and that's what made it even more disappointing at the end of the show to find out that the entire thing was ruined because of my big bonehead mistake. So, I feel like we talked about a lot of really good stuff in that podcast. I, I finished that podcast like, hey, that was a good conversation. There was a lot to be said, a lot to be learned, and... uh then I go back and listen to it and find that it is absolutely unbearable to the human ears. So I do sincerely apologize for that once again. If you did somehow manage to make it all the way through that thing, kudos. You deserve something. Um, I see a lot of people started listening to it, and I don't blame you at all for not making through. If you did make it through, I thought it was a pretty good conversation. I thought it was a, a good thing to have. But back to my original point, the reason I felt bad is because I left you with one of the poorest quality shows that we've done in the past six years as far as an audio standpoint uh, scenario. And what happened there is there's all sorts of stuff going on. I got this new thing that I'm using to run the shows and, and going to be running the broadcast with here in the near future. And in setting that up, I got confused. So we went back to the original setup. In going back to the original setup, uh, wires got crossed, things got done, things got plugged in, things didn't get plugged in, things didn't get changed back, settings changed. Long story long, that video or that podcast was recorded directly off of the onboard camera that was filming us. And if you know anything about onboard cameras, the microphones in them absolutely stink. Uh, even an iPhone would have been better. Anything would have been better. So we had our headsets on, and so in in our ears, we could hear each other fine. It wasn't until after the entire show was recorded that I realized that we goofed that one up. So that is part number one, I feel bad. Part number two that I feel bad is getting wrapped up in the conversation. We did not even mention that we were going on a brief hiatus for the summer break. And then one thing leads to another. Life gets in the way. I wasn't able to do a show uh, the next week. So I do apologize for doing a impromptu unannounced hiatus three weeks without a show but uh, i guess if it can if you can look at the the brighter side of things is that there wasn't any racing going on so there wasn't a whole lot to talk about in regards to what is happening now and in the news but after that bad news i will fill you in with some good news and this is also going to lead into the part where i said you're going to be disappointed by tonight's episode because I'm going to tease a lot of things, but we're not going to get into the meat and taters of all these things. So while we did not do a show and while there was not things going on live to talk about, there's plenty of stuff to talk about. There's plenty of storylines going in in the off-road world, and there is some very big things afoot for the second half of this season. And when I say very big things, I mean very big things. There is shakeups happening in the XC1 class. There are shakeups happening in the XC2 class. And there is even a shakeup going on in the XC3 class that I cannot wait to 
share with you guys, tell you all about it. But we're not going to get into that tonight because we are having the people that are doing the shaking up of the things on the show next week. So we'll go into all of these. I was about to say rumors, but they're not rumors because they're confirmed. Uh, Just want to get more details of all of it uh, coming from the people that it affects themselves. So the bad news is that we're not going to spill all the beans tonight. Got to keep you hooked. Got to keep you coming back. But the good news is, is next week, it's going to be action-packed. You're going to find out a lot of stuff from OTP between now and next week. Some big things going on. Some other big things going on. Friend of the show. Co-host of the show for last year. The Weekend Reviews with Stu. Stuart Baylor Jr. is back in the win column at a National Enduro. That is something that I never thought that we would have to say because I don't think anybody, including the 514 himself, would have predicted that after the neck injury it would take this long to get back into the win column. Obviously, this year has not been the year that Stu Baylor has been looking for, and it has not been the year that Stu Baylor has been accustomed to, especially in the National National Enduro Series. Now, it's tough to talk about that and say that Stu's not having the year that he wants because he currently has a share of the white plate. He has a share of the GNCC overall points lead he's sharing that points lead with Craig DeLong but his lone win of the season came at the very first round of the season down at Big Buck this national enduro where Stu has really shined where he has won five national championships I think or is it six I think it's six five six I don't know I've slept since last time I did this but you know how many national enduro championships he's won it's multiple it's a lot all right So, to say that we are surprised by a win by Stuart Baylor Jr. in the National Enduro just seems weird to say. In years past, that happens quite frequently. Honestly, most years it happens more often than not. So, uh, Stu Baylor back in the win column last weekend at the Rattlesnake National Enduro up in PA, Pennsylvania. So, um, he started on row 35 and ended up taking the overall win on the day. He won four out of the six tests, um, and it was right in the middle. So, it was a big old win sandwich for Stuart Baylor. Um Third place in the third place in class, fourth place overall in the first test, and then he won test two, three, four, and five, and then brought home a second place finish in the final test of the day. Conceded that final test to younger brother Grant Baylor, who is also the reigning defending National Enduro champion and the points leader over at the National Enduro Series. So Grant Baylor would end up second on the day with his consistent riding throughout. Josh Toth like both. Doing a little bit of uh, his do-all season. It's pretty cool. He is racing all of the National Enduro Series. That is the only series that he will participate in its entirety. Josh Toth comes away with a third-place finish. Puts it on the podium once again at the National Enduro Series. Checking out the Pro 2 class. We've talked about him this year several times. We've sung his praises. We've talked about him. Thorne Devlin grabs another win on that Gas Gas machine. He's kind of doing his own deal this year as well, just uh, kind of going with the flow and getting back to the roots of it and having fun with it. Thorne Devlin pulls off another Pro 2 win in that NE Pro 2 class. Um, Second place in that Pro 2 class, Hunter Bush. Hunter Bush putting up there on the Pro 2 podium, also on a Gas Gas. And then on a Beta Factory Racing Beta Machine, Jonathan Johnson. Johnny Joe Hansen puts it in third place, grabs the final overall podium position on the day at the National Enduro, the Rattlesnake National Enduro that happened just last weekend. Checking it out now, the top amateur was Justin Lafferty in the double A class up there in PA. And then we take a look down at our women's elite class, the women's pro class. Rachel Goodish goes on to take the win on the day. A clean sweep of all five sections for Rachel Goodish. So um, going out there, dominant victory on the day as she wins. Test one, what? Test two, what? Test three, what? Test four and test five. Uh, Mackenzie Trigger, reigning defending multi-time National Enduro Women's Elite Champion, would end the day second place. And then Kate Nash would round out your Women's Elite Pro Class podium. So really, 
That's that's like uh, that's that's all the racing that we missed. There's been some other stuff going on. There's been some regional stuff going on. There's been some J days going on. Um, I think there's another J day going on this weekend. Um, so there is still some racing action. There's still a lot going on. But as far as our our meat and taters, I don't think there's been anything on the West Coast. Um, we are a few weeks away from seeing the return of GNCC. That's going to be – when is that going to be? I don't think it's going to be for a while. I think we got some time, to be honest with you. We are in this weekend here. So we're not going back GNCC racing until the September 11th weekend, um, September 9th and 10th, and that will be in Ohio. No, it won't. I'm looking at the wrong thing. It will be September 16th and 17th in Beckley, the Mountaineer, the Boy Scout camp. Um that weekend beforehand, that will be the National Enduro that's going on in Ohio, which I'm pretty sure the signups are going on for that tomorrow. So what I'm getting at is as far as our meat and taters, the East Coast racing, we're still a few weeks out from it. Uh, two weeks from now, so I guess two and a half weeks from now, it will be the uh, TKO, Hard Enduro, at the Trials Training Center in Tennessee. I will be going to that one. We'll be hanging out with the beta team and doing some filming down at the TKO. That was a really fun race last year. A lot of big name international heavy hitters are going to be there, so I plan to be there as well. And then the weekend after that, we go back to Mideast Racing. That will be at Wellborn Farms up in Boonville, North Carolina. Basically racing... Uh, well, the, the Wellborn Farms property is very rich in race history, and we say that because the GOAT, Caleb Russell, actually lives on Wellborn Farms property, I think is the, the way that you could put it. Uh, he could walk there. In fact, he has ridden his dirt bike there in years past with a backpack full of beer and uh, watched the racing action. So he could be racing, could be hanging out watching the racing action. Uh, I would imagine his son, Crew, will be racing. But, um, yeah, that's... Uh, a pretty, uh, pretty tight little racing area up there. Lane Michael up in the area as well. And then tons of local pros are, are within a couple hours of there. So that Wellborns Farm race will be a good one. We're looking forward to it. Looking forward to getting back to racing. I don't even know what to do with my weekends. It's been crazy. Uh, I took up a new sport of golf, trying to get good at it. Not very good at it yet. Uh, shot two rounds of 85, though. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, we need racing to come back. Speaking of coming back, Beta Motorcycles is the official manufacturer of On The Pipe Podcast. Beta Motorcycles is family owned and operated, but you already knew that. They manufacture the enduro, the finest enduro trials and dual sport motorcycles. They're known for their premium quality and rideability. Head over to betausa.com for more information on their available models. Find a dealer near you to get yours today. We also got a few other sponsors that are going to be joining the show. Um, and as far as the future of On the Pipe podcast, we might see we might see some changes. We might see some transitions. Um, not really prepared to go into the details yet, but working on some stuff. We got some sponsors coming on board that I can't wait to work with and can't wait to um, let you guys know about. We're excited about it. We're in the prime time for getting things done for next year. So if you would like to be a part of On The Pipe Podcast, uh, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to to talk with you about that. Um, it also, this episode, as always, is brought to you in part by Zach Tussle at Raymond James Financial. Zach is a racer, a financial advisor, and a friend of the show. He helps his clients win when it comes to retirement and financial planning. If you or someone you know wants to save and invest for their future or is already retired and needs advice for income during retirement, Zach Tussle is always my go-to recommendation. So, Reach out to Zach Tussle, financialadvisorsdenvernc.com, or find him, find him on the social. Search for Zach Tussle. He's been on the show. Go listen to that show. Uh, hear a little bit more about his history and how he can help you out. Um, yeah, like I said, we got some stuff going on. We got we got big news. All sorts of big news. Thad Duvall is back on a motorcycle and even racing at the locals. Love to see it. We've seen Thad miss a good portion of this season with uh, with everything that he has been going on or um, some injuries and stuff that he had going on. He is back on the bike and back competing. So we can expect, I would imagine, to see him back at the races at the beginning of the race season after summer break. Lyndon Snodgrass 
good friend of the show as well. We got some stuff lined up with Lyndon in the next week. Actually, two days from now. So, spoiler alert, some of the big news is going to be coming out of that Lyndon Snodgrass camp. And I uh, can't wait to share that with you all here in probably about a week's time. We'll be getting started on it here in a couple of days. But Linda Snodgrass, healthy, back on the bike, back going. Last year's defending and reigning XC2 champion had that breakout year and then uh, ended up getting pretty ill at the beginning of the season and as a result has had to miss um, – Basically the whole season. I know he raced the first few races, but not at 100%. And then he ended up having to sit out a while after that. Completely take time off the bike. But he is back on the bike, back in action, training, and ready to roll. Looking forward to seeing the return of Lyndon Snodgrass. And looking forward to telling you guys a little bit more about the Lyndon Snodgrass story. What happened this year, um, how it's been since then, the recovery, the training, the coming back. All of those questions should be answered with um, within the next week or so. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for that. Be on the lookout for that. Um, look for a lot of that will be coming out on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed already to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash on the pipe podcast or just search for on the pipe podcast. Uh, you can keep up to date with that. Really going video heavy on the projects here um, that we have coming up. So we're doing that video project with Lyndon Snodgrass. We're going to be doing a video project with Trevor Bollinger and some folks up at his compound that are training and riding. Uh, they got a little little camp going on up there. Um, if you listen to the, the episode where Trevor came in and we kind of sat down and talked about his entire career and really broke it down year by year, it was a really cool, unique podcast. If you didn't hear it, I suggest going back and looking for it. Trevor literally detailed his entire career step by step, and we kind of talked about it. But one of the big things that we talked about and one of the biggest attributes or things that he credits to his success for that XC2 title in 2016 was um, his friend and trainer, Tomas, that came from – damn, I can't believe I'm messing I think it's Chile. I want to say Chile. Um, came, lived with Trevor for a while. We told the story, or he told the story about how they met, how he became his trainer, and everything that they put in to achieve those championship goals. Well, guess what? Tomas is back, and he is in Morganton, North Carolina, and he is training the boys up on Bollinger Gap Road. Trevor Bollinger's up there. Brody Johansson's up there. Jonathan Johansson's up there. Mike Wachowski's up there. Mike DeLosa is up there. So... All sorts of riders at different points of their careers. Um, Brody Johnson, seen the top am, was the top am, got a couple injuries, XC3 championship. Now he's working his way back into what he once was, um, but he's also like 13 years old. So Brody Johnson still has a lot left to prove in this sport and can't wait to see that. Um, he's been racing, coming back on that Magna 1 team. So... We'll be able to chat with him, get some more information on him. Mike Wachowski, um, longtime XC2 competitor, longtime XC2 championship hopeful. Be able to talk with him, change teams this year, we'll see how that stuff is going. Mike DeLosa currently in head to head battle for top amateur honors, local Mideast pro overall champion and national one of the top amateurs that there is so being able to hear about where he's coming from and then Trevor Bollinger been there done that in XC1 been hurt off the bike on the bike off the bike on the bike be able to talk to him as well and then really see that program that they're running up there so that's going to be another video project that we have coming up that I'm super excited to tell you all about Ricky Russell Freshly married, married this past weekend, so congratulations uh, to Ricky Russell and uh, his wife on them tying the knot and getting married over this past weekend. Um, Rachel Archer, some of the news might be revolving some of her, you know what I mean? So we got some stuff coming up on that as well. I think we're going to do a podcast with Rachel Archer to hear some news from her and see what she's got going on. Um, that might be coming up this week. Or into next week. So there's another fun little exciting thing to look forward to um, as we progress throughout this season. Other than that, man, summer break. Feel like it's been four years and feel like it's been two seconds all at once. Before we know it, we'll be back at the races every single weekend. 
Um, excited to get back. I guess it is a, a good uh, – I, I guess the writing's on the wall now. The Bite GP series – did not go as planned this year. Uh, pretty bummed at the way that that whole thing went down. The people that were in, the people that were back out, the people that were back in, the people that were back out. Um, it's tough. It's tough to do anything in this industry uh, as far as getting stuff done and, and getting funding and, and doing all that. So it is still something I'm very passionate about. It's something that I very much so still believe in. I believe that it can be something that can change and revolutionize the sport. It is not something that I'm giving up on, but it is something that did not come to fruition this year. Hopefully, we can find a way to make it happen because uh, I think, oh man, uh, I could go on a tangent about that for forever. Um, other than that, thank you guys for, for all listening and being a part of this thing. We went over six years that we've been doing the podcast since we started this thing up. We have over a million followers across social media platforms, which actually absolutely blows my mind. I don't understand how that even makes sense, but between YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, we have over one million followers that are following along with OTP, and more importantly, following along with the world of off-road racing. Um, we're over half a million views. No, half a billion views. We're over... No. Yeah, over half a billion views this year from this little stupid podcast and um, this world of off-road racing. So uh, w when you look back, it's tough sometimes dealing with the way this industry works. Um, but nonetheless, all that aside, for me, I think it's really cool to know that um, we've helped contribute to making a difference and, and getting this little sport of off-road racing known to more and more people. Obviously, more eyeballs brings more attention, more interest, more money, more fans, more everything, and that has been the goal. And so it's cool when you think in one calendar year, today's August 1st, so we've been seven full months in this year, and over half a billion people have been exposed to On The Pipe podcast just via a video Um I think last year when I quit my job, we had done a hundred thousand downloads in for the actual podcast in the show's history, five year history. Uh, I think this year, year to date, we've done like over 300,000 downloads of the podcast just this year alone. So the thing has grown and yeah, mainly just trying to figure out what direction we take it from here because as I've said from the beginning, my goal has always been to shine a brighter light on what these athletes are doing and to grow the sport. That being said, <laughs> I also got to find a way to uh, pay the bills and stuff while doing it and covering it. Um, it is a passion project for me. It is something that I really love to do, and it's something that I hope to continue in some capacity. What that capacity is is yet to be unknown. But if you've been a listener in the past six years, we really appreciate it. And I always say we, but it's really me. Uh, one man band over here, one man operation. So thank you for even listening to this episode. If you made it this far in my rants, really appreciate you. Really appreciate you choosing to listen to On The Pipe Podcast. Check us out on YouTube so you can stay up to date with everything that is going on. Be a friend, tell a friend, let them know about the show. And uh, hopefully this will be, we're kicking things into high gear, man. We're going to finish this year out strong. We're going to talk about all this stuff. We're going to hear about all the news. We're going to talk about all the gossip. And uh, we're going to keep rolling forward and keep promoting the sport of off-road racing. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you next week on On The Pipe Podcast.